Laudato Jesus Christus, Vatican and World News. In the headlines this Holy Saturday, April the 3rd, on the third day of the Easter Triduum, Pope Francis presides over the Easter Vigil Mass. The Church in the Philippines gears up to kick off celebrations on Easter Day of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the nation. And a pharaonic procession in Cairo sees mummies of ancient kings and queens from as far back as Egypt's 17th dynasty ruler to Ramses IX being paraded through the streets en route to their new resting place. In the Vatican, I'm Linda Bordoni. Pope Francis on Holy Saturday evening presides over the Easter Vigil Mass in St. Peter's Basilica. Due to the continuation of the COVID-19 health emergency, as he did last year, the Holy Father celebrates the Holy Week rites at the altar of the Cathedra in St. Peter's Basilica. With the participation of the cardinals, the superiors of the Secretariat of State, and a limited number of faithful. On Friday night, the Pope presided at a stark Way of the Cross rite held in an empty St. Peter's Square, listening as children provided their meditations, recounting their fears and dreams. It was the second consecutive year that the Via Crucis procession, commemorating the last hours in Jesus' life, was not held at Rome's ancient Colosseum since the modern-day Easter tradition was reintroduced by Pope Paul VI in 1964. Candles in the form of a huge cross dotted an empty St. Peter's Square as about only 200 people took part. The meditations at each station related the experiences of children to those of Jesus. At the 13th station, when Jesus is taken down from the cross, a child recalled seeing his grandfather being taken away in an ambulance and never seeing him again after he dies of coronavirus. Of course, you can follow all papal liturgies and events on Vatican News media channels with commentary in English. And on Easter Sunday, you can follow the Pope who will celebrate Holy Mass at 10 a.m. Rome time and then deliver the Urbi et Orbi address at noon. The year-long celebrations of 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines kick off tomorrow, Easter Sunday, April the 4th. On Holy Saturday, the Philippine Church released the official lyric video song of the celebrations. It's entitled, Live Christ, Share Christ. Robin Gomes tells us more. We are blessed, blessed hundredfold, the We are blessed, blessed a hundredfold, the cross of Jesus Christ in our holy shores. These are the opening lines of the lyric video, Live Christ, Share Christ, the official song of 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. It has been produced by the Episcopal Commission on Social Communications of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, CBCP, in collaboration with the Jesuit Communications and Monte Maria Asia Pilgrims. The lyrics draw inspiration from the official theme of the celebrations, Gifted to Give. The song was first launched in 2013 at the start of the nine-year spiritual journey leading up to this year's quincentennial celebrations of the arrival of the gospel in the country. Eight singer celebrities have lent their voice to the revival version of the song with arrangement by Marvin Querido. The lyrics were written by Archbishop Socrates Villegas of Lingayan Dagupan with the original musical arrangement by Ryan Kayabiab, the national artist for music. A little over four minutes duration, the song has been uploaded on the Facebook page and YouTube channel of 500 Years of Christianity or 500YOC. It will also be available on Spotify, Deezer and iTunes in the next two weeks. Dioceses and parishes across the country will launch the year-long Jubilee celebrations on April the 4th, Easter Sunday. It will be marked by the country's bishops simultaneously opening the holy doors in all cathedrals, which will remain open throughout the Jubilee year until April 22nd, 2022. I am Robin Gomes. 
In other news, in Myanmar, security forces opened fire on anti-coup protesters on Saturday, killing at least two people, according to local media. A human rights group said mounting violence since the February the 1st military takeover has killed at least 550 civilians. Of those, 46 are children. This is according to Myanmar's Assistance Association for Political Prisoners. The group also says that at almost 2,000 800 people have been detained or sentenced. Threats of lethal violence and arrests of protesters have failed to suppress daily demonstrations across Myanmar, demanding the military step down and reinstate the democratically elected government. Meanwhile, the Karin National Union, representing the ethnic minority rebel group that has been fighting the government for decades, condemned alleged non-stop bombings and airstrikes against villagers and unarmed civilians in their homeland along the border with Thailand. After weeks of overnight cut-offs of internet access, Myanmar's military on Friday shut down most social media and access to mobile networks and all wireless remains blocked. A huge increase in undocumented migration is presenting a crisis surge for Mexican and U.S. authorities. James Blears reports that the level of desperation is indicated in the large number of unaccompanied children being found wandering. During the last month, the U.S. Border Patrol says they've detained more than 171,000 undocumented migrants trying to cross the border into the United States, which is the highest number in the last 15 years. Particularly alarming is the fact that this includes 19,000 unaccompanied children, while there are 53,000 families and almost 100,000 adults traveling alone. But this is most probably just the tip of the iceberg, as thousands more getting through in spite of all the security precautions due to sheer weight of numbers. The top priority is caring for the unaccompanied children by finding proper housing, as many have been languishing in makeshift processing centres, sometimes for weeks. The aim is to open and provide more appropriate emergency shelters. US Vice President Kamala Harris is in charge of coordinating the response. She describes it as a huge problem which can't be resolved overnight. Desperate economic conditions in Central America and Southern Mexico are creating this surge. Also, many hope that the new administration of Joe Biden may be more sympathetic and accommodating in spite of repeated urging and warnings from senior U.S. officials that this action will not help the cause for thousands who are seeking asylum, but fundamentally a better life in the United States with nothing to stay for or go back to. For Vatican Radio, James Blizz reporting. In Mozambique's northern Cabo Delgado province, horrific accounts continue to emerge regarding an attack by fundamentalist jihadi militants on the town of Palma two weeks ago. Aid workers believe tens of thousands of people fled the assault, which began on March the 24th. However, just 9,900 of those displaced had been registered in Pemba and other parts of Cabo Delgado province. Many could still be hiding in surrounding forests, and humanitarian workers say those who have emerged tell of seeing bodies of others who died of hunger or dehydration along the way. According to the UN Children's Fund UNICEF, many children and young people have been separated from their parents and they all desperately need help. UNICEF's head of communications in Mozambique, Daniel Tim, spoke to UN News from an aid hub in Pemba. So in Parma, the situation is quite desperate. The attack came as a great surprise and one of the big problems is that in this city already there is a large number of displaced people, around 35,000 people. And the city has widely been destroyed. People have been taking refuge in the bushes, but also around this gas extraction site and are gradually being evacuated. So I was at the airport here in Pemba and the humanitarian air service of the United Nations is going back and forth 
and bringing in people. We have been welcoming children here. Unfortunately, many of them unaccompanied children. We don't know where their parents are. And together with colleagues, we are first seeing if they need medical attention, how their nutrition status is. And together with the social welfare services here in Mozambique, we are placing them temporarily either in host families or in accommodation centers where they have a roof, food, medicine, and also psychosocial support. You can imagine these children have gone through so much. The fighting is still going on in Palma and humanitarian access has been difficult even before these attacks. So the road to Palma was blocked off. There are very limited supplies and it's very difficult, therefore, to respond to these thousands of people that are gathering there now waiting for their evacuation. And that was UNICEF Head of Communications in Mozambique, Daniel Tim, speaking there to UN News. A Taiwan court on Saturday released on bail the manager of a construction site whose truck, authorities believe, caused a train accident that killed at least 51 people. The crash on Friday was Taiwan's worst rail accident in seven decades. The eight-carriage express train hit a truck that had slipped down from a bank beside the track from a building site. The site's manager is suspected of having failed to properly engage the truck's brakes. The train, with almost 500 people aboard, was travelling from Taipei, the capital, to Taitung on the east coast when it derailed in a tunnel. 41 people are still in hospital. And finally, the mummified remains of 22 Egyptian pharaohs have been paraded through the streets of Cairo in a procession to a new resting place. Nathan Morley tells us more. For the people of Cairo, this was a once in a lifetime experience. Just before sunset on Saturday, this remarkable display, which is being dubbed locally as the Pharaoh's Golden Parade, saw the mummies moved four miles across Cairo from the Egyptian Museum to the new National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. This new complex was completed over ten years ago, but the opening was delayed by the Arab Spring Revolution and subsequent turmoil in the region. The 18 kings and four queens, including Ramses II, were transported aboard separate floats in an event which lasted just under an hour. The mummies were discovered near Luxor in the late Victorian period and have been kept in the Egyptian Museum ever since. UNESCO's Director General Audrey Azoulay said the mummies' rehousing marks the end of much work to improve their conservation and exhibition. She said this raises emotions that go much further than a mere relocation of a collection. She said the public are seeing the history of Egyptian civilization unfold before their very eyes. Tourism officials in the country are hoping that the new museum will help boost tourism, which has been seriously affected by the coronavirus. The industry has also been battered by political turbulence over the past decade. For Vatican Radio, this is Nathan Morley reporting. That brings us to the end of this edition of Vatican and World News, a reminder that we'll be providing live coverage of all papal liturgies and events, including the Easter Saturday vigil presided over by the Pope in St. Peter's Basilica on Saturday evening, and Holy Mass on Sunday morning, and the Urbi et Orbi address at noon, also on Easter Sunday. You can follow with English commentary on our web portal at www.vaticannews.va. Many thanks to Mario Scatton in studio.